Welcome to the Keel Hog Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, I got to sail with the devs for the weekly stream, and it's probably been the most exciting week since I've turned pirate legend, to be honest. We found out more information from the New York Comic Con panel about the Build Rat Adventure, some community spotlight, some expanded universe, as well as some future things coming on down the line. That and more on this week's episode of the Keel Hauled Podcast. <laughs> First up on today's docket, let's talk about the actual weekly stream. So if you guys were there, you already know all this, but I just, I gotta say for my captain's log, I can't say anything other than being able to stream with the devs. I got to go with uh, Shelly Preston and James Thomas. It was great to have John McFarlane again hosting as always. And man, I asked a ton of questions and they actually went into a lot of detail about most of them. I was really kind of surprised. This was the, the whole reason why I wanted to get on the stream was I wanted to ask them a bunch of questions, sail with them, get to know them, and pretty much be that that person that, you know, I'm, I'm always on here. I'm speculating as always, trying to find out what's going on. with. I'm going to be doing that a lot today too. Uh, but I had to get in there and actually get some, some questions thrown out there, things that have been kind of troubling me as I've been playing and wondering, you know, what's going on? So some of the highlights, uh, we we found out for sure that the reason why the cargo crates have a specific set of costs is because Shelly basically decided that they didn't want to have things like them getting slightly wet determine the, the, the value if it was like, say, not a set rate. So you didn't have any questions on whether or not you were doing something wrong that was causing the, the price to go up or down. And, and they just wanted to make it very clear because there are very specific states of the cargo as you get them wet or they break or they splinter or you know they die they're wilting things like that uh we found out that the mpcs uh the c posts are not going to be just for for the, like things are going to grow and expand with those c posts which was really kind of interesting to think that they could become more than just the little bits of of cargo drops for the the future um being able to put down multiple voyages was one of those things that i've i've constantly wanted and of course the the messages in a bottle kind of achieve that but I've always been able wanted to be able to be able to put um, order souls and gold hoarders down and to, to be able to find out that some of that is something that they they re recognize but just how to do it in a good way was was really cool and, I, and I'm glad that I got a chance to talk about the ledger idea that I've been thinking about on how you can put pages from a message in a bottle in a ledger and you could flip through the ledger and see like what voyages you have and then you could skip ones mark things off and keep track of chapters and things like that in that ledger. A couple of the other things that I thought was interesting about the the talking to Shelly, especially asking her a lot about the lore, because with a lot of the 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 books that we got with Forsaken Shores, uh, Grace Morrow definitely talked about some weird things as far as like marrying the uh, the the mermaid prince or battling Lord Pinch. Uh, there's so much interesting stuff, and they even teased about like how the crab in the trailers might be actual lore pinch and she basically said that a lot of the stuff that she wrote down in that journal was after a long period of time of being alone and that there's a good chance that things like the red maw lord pinch and marrying a mermaid prince may not actually be fact that may be just something of her figment of imagination the one thing that it still kind of pulls at my at my mind is is the fact that she mentioned how the visits from the pirate lord now the pirate lord is going to be in the upcoming book and i'm going to talk talk a little bit about that later on in the episode but we found out that Stitcher Jim did actually know the Pirate Lord as well as Grace Morrow and this all kind of ties together because one of actually I don't know if I want to go into that just now um no I'm not I'm going to hold off until I get to the New York Comic Con stuff but I do I'm, I'm hoping that I can remind myself to talk about the connection between Grace uh Jim and and uh at Ramsey so um, they asked some information uh, about like whether or not the Devil's Roar was going to be permanent. I didn't. Did anyone actually think that was going to be taken out at the end of the campaign? Like nothing's nothing's actually been ever taken out of the game except for a few 
cosmetics way back in May. I mean, everything's pretty much still in there. So I'm, I'm not sure why people were worried that the Devil's Roar would just disappear after the event is done. Uh, that being said, the upcoming build um, information was kind of just saying like, you know, we're going to get some exclusive cosmetics for that. And we do have until the 31st of this month to be able to finish up the Forsaken Shores cosmetic stuff, stuff as well too. So if there's uh, stuff that you're still working on trying to get those commendations to get the doubloons to be able to get the liveries and the guns uh, for the Forsaken Ashen stuff, uh, that or the Ashen Forsaken, I can't remember which way it is right now. That all, that's going to be actual stuff that's going to be able to um, be until the, the 31st to be able to pick it up. Uh, the messages in the bottles don't count towards commendations because uh, they're they're typically shorter and they typically uh, only have one island. Uh, that being said, the frequency of those is probably going to get turned down as well as tuning of the prices for the cargo runs. Uh, she uh, Shelly did actually say that the Athena's chests, the gold for that was actually going to be raised, uh, which I think is cool because uh, those always tended to feel uh, they were the most you could possibly get outside of the box of Wonder of Secrets. That being said, it's still kind of a, a low number in comparison to how much time it's, it takes to actually get those uh, to be able to turn those in. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Gosh, I don't know. I just had a really good time sailing with them. It was a lot of fun, and they were so funny. And I actually managed to get to sail with James uh, later in that week. I got to jump into one of his little sessions and just kind of chat a little bit more with him on a more personal basis, just kind of getting to know him. So it was really cool. Hopefully one of these days I'll get a chance to actually sail with uh, you know pretty much everyone. I would love to sail with everyone. John, Mike, Joe, uh, Shelly. Andy, Pete, uh, Adam, gosh, uh, just about anyone uh, and from the team. They, they all seem like a lot of fun, and I can't wait to oh, – I would love to actually get to meet them. Hopefully, hopefully, E3. Hopefully, E3 2019, I'll have a press pass, and I can actually go to E3 and spend some time with them in person talking about the game, talking about my thoughts, and hopefully we'll have a lot more content out by then to the point where it's like – more stuff I've never even dreamed of is coming and is already announced and stuff. So who knows? Um, all right. I think that's going to cover it as far as the weekly stream. I'm going to put a link in the show notes. If you haven't gotten a chance to go watch it, it's, it's the longest weekly stream. There's supposed to be two hours. I pushed us out to finish up at mermaids hideaway because five paces, uh, is, is just too funny of a dude to, to not deliver cargo to. So, um, that's going to do it for the weekly stream. Moving on to the next item on today's docket. <laughs> All right, next up on today's docket, let's dive into the New York Comic Con panel video that we got on Thursday. This was exceptional. Now, I had already seen a bunch of information from this from the Reddit posts commenting on stuff that they found out at the actual Comic-Con panel. This confirms pretty much all of it. All the information that we got from there basically says that everything that was talked about on the uh, the Reddit page is true. Uh, we just got a lot more information about it, and it was just it was actually just kind of nice to sit down and watch the panel. God, I really, I don't know why. I just really love these. So as far as future updates, uh, any talks... Uh, uh, ab ab about the development, um, he, he Andy basically goes in and he talks about the development as far as the the megalodon with uh, hungering deep and then curse sales and then he actually thought it was interesting and I didn't think about this at the time but the villain from the first update actually helps you take down the villain from the second update from time to time as far as the megalodon actually attacking the curse sailed ships and that was kind of a crazy process to to like I was like oh yeah that's kind of funny too like the megalodon doesn't choose sides but it does help you but sometimes it cannot help you as well too so it's kind of like getting double teamed by the the villains of the of the first two updates or having the villain turn and help you out for the second update but they talked a lot about the build-up weeks to the the different updates and that's something that i actually really do love i do love when they actually have these little changes in the world you know there's a shift in in what's going on in the the climate of uh sea of thieves and you can actually kind of sense something, you know, a change in the winds, if you will. Uh, so that was really cool. The thing that I think was really interesting about Andy talking about this was that he talks about how all the stuff that they've learned about these first three updates is helping to inform them for the future updates and actually kind of do a game-changing update in the future that will help kind of deliver the, the narrative a lot better. 
All right, next up on today's docket, I'm just going to rehash all the information about the next Bill Drat adventure titled The Festival of the Damned. Now, this is starting on October 31st, and it will be kind of our first holiday Bill Drat adventure. Now, this is going to be celebrating the Fairy of the Damned and the Ferryman himself. And the way we're basically going to be achieving things is using the Well of Fates, which will be a uh, flame down on the actual Fairy of the Damned, will change its color color based on how you died. Uh, if you died by a gunpowder keg, then your flame will be red, and you can use your lantern to get some of this flame. Uh, capture it, if you will. Kind of reminds me a lot of Zelda when you used to put flames in a bottle or Poe spirits in a bottle. And you can take these uh, lanterns and either do one of two things. You can either decorate your ship with them by changing the lights on your actual ship, which I, I really like the idea of just because it's one of those things that you, you most people don't typically use. And you see a lot of the different colors that are on the... Um, a lot of the different colors that are on the, the cursed ships. And I really love those. Uh, they're really amazing. And y when you see them from a dis distance, they just look really different. You know, it's 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 shocking or, or striking on the on the horizon. And to be able to do that in this, I hope that's something that actually persists. I hope that the Well of Fates isn't just something that goes away. Because to be able to do this uh, for the rest of the year would be something that's really fun. And I think uh, potentially interesting, depending on how things go with the next update. Uh, seeing as how things are going to be shrouded hmm I don't know but either way if you don't want to decorate your ship then there is something you can do with these and you can go around the world and actually light up lanterns now if you've been out in the world you've probably seen plenty of lanterns so there's a good chance that they're going to ask you to go to specific locations in the world of sea thieves either the original three seas or into the devil's roar and be able to change these colors based on the commendations. Now, we haven't seen any of the commendations yet. We probably won't until the 31st. But just knowing that a lot of these are going to be based around uh, exploration and dying in new and interesting ways, I think is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's something that I think a lot of people enjoy doing and is one of the reasons why we stomped out the concept of having a death tax so early in the life of the game, just to be able to have this freedom to, to enjoy um, being out there doing silly stuff with with who knows what in in the game you know better to have uh, fewer fewer penalties for exploration and quote-unquote science uh, so that way we can have fun build rad adventures like this and with this build rad adventure we're getting makeup which is really kind of cool. Uh, we're getting the, again, we're getting that face on the hand, or that, that the handprint on your, the, the face on the hand. That makes no sense. The handprint on the face, uh, kind of like the, the weird kind of marked demon, all demon kind of mark on your face. Um, it's, uh, God, that, for some reason that reminds me of the black spot. I don't know why. Black spot, hand, face, I don't know. Uh, and we're getting the skull and then the ghost, the actual ghost, uh, like eyes and stuff. So uh, personally, I'm probably going to be sporting the skull uh, paint. The interesting thing about this is that a lot of people are looking at this and seeing that there are three different ones to get. And I'm thinking that these are three that we're going to be getting, but I think that makeup in general is going to be coming finally, finally to the game. I think at the end of October, we're finally going to be getting makeup. And that's evident in some aspects by them commemorating Captain Daggers McTimbers. That's right. Harriet is getting her very own makeup in the game, and that is that was amazing to see uh, photos of. Now, back when the New York Comic Con panel had hit, I had heard tale that there was a Twitter girl who got her makeup in the game, and immediately I thought of daggers because, as far as I've been around the community, I haven't seen anyone else come out with such striking colors and then using them in makeup to represent their love for Sea of Thieves. So seeing Daggers get this was exceptionally amazing. Uh, I couldn't think of anyone that deserves it more. And it's it's the perfect way to celebrate her love for the game because now everyone gets to experience it. And I love that. I think that's a, a great way to do it. Um, that being said, there's also one other thing that I think is actually going to be coming up in this update, and that's the Loot and Lore Game Show sales. That's right. Frosty has actually gotten his Loot and Lore Chillmore 
sails. They're green. They've got speaking trumpets because he always uses a speaking trumpet whenever he's playing the music for the events or he's trying to get out in touch with other pirates. He's going to be the only one that actually has these sails. So if you ever, ever see a sloop with green sails and a bunch of game type stuff with an L and L on the uh, the front there, stop because he's probably going to give you a bunch of loot for answering questions and doing physical challenges. It's pretty cool. I'm really happy for him. Uh, he really has worked hard to try and make loot and lore as amazing as it is. And to be able to see that kind of flourish and grow has been really nice for the community. It's a good good point of positivity out there. And I think a lot of people have come together around his community just to uh, experience it and to support him as well as the idea of having fun in the game and doing stuff in new and interesting ways. All right, next up on today's docket, I want to cover some more information about the New York Comic Con panel. This time, let's dive into some of the information that we got about the expanded universe. And what I'm talking about is the actual comic books. Now, if you've been following the comic books, you already know that the first stories that we got actually focused around the kids of the Pirate's Lord actually going out on their first adventure in the Sea of Thieves to discover their father's treasure. Now, I'm not going to spoil any of that. I really think you guys need to go out and actually get the comic books and read them because I have a feeling that what happens in the comics plus what happens in the book that we're getting, Athena's Fortune, is going to heavily tie into some of the future content updates for Sea of Thieves as they start pulling in these expanded universe characters and putting them in the actual game. That's not what I was actually going after. Uh, I'm surprised I talked about that. The, the So we're getting a new run of comics, and they're going to be distributed in interesting ways, uh, which I'm not sure how you distribute comics in interesting ways unless they're animated and online or, I don't know, exclusive to certain out outlets. I, I don't know how that works. But anyway, they said that we're supposed to be getting them in new ways. And they're going to be focusing on the trade companies and how the trade companies actually got started. Now, one thing that I did pick up from Shelly during the weekly stream was that the Order of Souls use the skulls that we provide them to get the secrets using magic from the skulls to draw up maps and riddles for the gold hoarders. So the Order of Souls actually supplies the gold hoarders with maps and the gold hoarders actually give us maps to dig up treasure chests and then give us a portion of it. Now, a lot of people are kind of wondering, like, why the gold hoarders would pay us uh, whatever they, whatever, you know, what's in the chest. I'm sure that whatever's in those chests is worth a lot more than just the amount of gold that they're giving us. So that being said, I'm kind of wondering, what is the Merchant Alliance doing? Are they just trying to establish routes of cargo or routes of trade with uh, other outposts and trying to establish forts or towns in Sea of Thieves? It's, it's interesting to me to kind of wonder, like, what is their purpose in the world of Sea of Thieves? Uh, other than trading animals and taking cargo from shipwrecks, because right now they don't offer cargo outside of the new stuff that we just got. It's, it's always been them taking sugar, silks, spices, things like that. And now with the Forsaken Shores, we're giving them rocks. But what good are those to a merchant? What are those being developed for? Unless maybe it's for new weapons or new ammo types. Maybe they're using the, the Forsaken Ash and the, the, the Exquisite Minerals, things like that. Maybe they're giving those to people that can use them to create new cosmetics or new types of, of things in the world as far as like what's around like weapons. Maybe, maybe the reason why the Devil's Roar exists is to get new types of ore to be able to give us customizations for our ships like the cannons and the capstans and the wheels, etc. <laughs> All right, the next item from the New York Comic Con panel I want to talk about deals with DeMarco and Lissetti. So, like I was mentioning with the comics, the kids from the Pirate Lords went out on their first adventure in the first run of the comics, which was a really interesting thing because they had a full crew and the crew actually knew each other in some ways. But they set sail from the Pirate Lords Tavern, which has one of the one of two pistols that prevents people from being able to fire weapons now you can stab all you want but you can't fire weapons and in uh should i ruin this okay spoiler warning for the next 30 seconds five four three two one okay 
at the end of the comics, they actually find the la- the second uh, the second pistol. This is interesting because it goes into the next little bit of um, the next little bit of lore that might be going. We might be seeing that in the game because we're gonna see them. So hopefully you're back. You skipped forward 30 seconds. I'm just gonna assume that you did. So we did find out that Demarco and Lissetti are gonna be in the game in the not too distant future in an update. Joe actually teased that that DeMarco, both of them are honestly pretty competitive, to be honest. Neither of them really wants the other to to win, uh, especially when it comes to getting treasure. But DeMarco himself uh, was said to be very competitive. And I'm really interested to find out how this plays into the Sea of Thieves because we know that because of this video that they're going to be very prominent, they're going to be very interacted or interactive, and they're going to be part of the narrative in some upcoming uh, content. And the 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 future. Oh man, should I get into this? I'm wondering if I should get into this because I've been talking about the the shrouded stuff uh, with Joe talking about this for a while, and. Um, you know what? Forget it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into it now. Uh, okay, so I've been talking a lot with other people, speculating on what the next update is gonna be and how it's gonna be shrouded. And I've talked about mer people. I've talked about um, ice worlds on the podcast. I've talked about marsh worlds on the podcast. And the more I keep thinking about it, the more I keep jumping from pl- thing to thing to thing to thing. So. I was going to talk about this as the captain's log, but I'm going to jump into it right now because I got a chance to jump into stream with uh, Mike and Carides last night, and uh, they were finishing up their kind of they were like the 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 um, she of thieves uh, stream was going on today, and I missed most of it thanks to work. Uh, but they were basically raising. Um, raising money as a charity and it was nothing but women on the ships. And I thought, and I can't wait to jump back and actually watch, uh, Carity's VOD on this because I'm sure it's awesome. So, um, Mike and, uh, uh, some other people, uh, were, were kind of sailing around. They did some stuff. They got on Athena's done and I jumped in because Captain Nightmare had popped in, um, because Lara had, had, had to go. She had internet problems. So, uh, Nick was filling in and then I jumped in and then, um, I got a free Athena's thanks to that. And then I got a partial Athena's thanks to an alliance. But all of that was going on at the very end of, the, of, of Mike's stream. He actually, not Mike Chapman, by the way. Um, sorry, I'm talking about Mike Artarchus. I, I, I hate that I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, I'm actually going to have to ask him. But we're actually going to be sailing this coming Thursday at 11 a.m., Pacific time in the States and then 7 p.m. BST. So keep an eye out for that on both his Mixer channel and mine. I'll probably put them in the show notes now that I think about it. But anyway, so to get to the point, I was sailing with him and Carides at the end of their stream. And we were just kind of hanging out, turning in our stuff when all of a sudden, who shows up in his chat? Joe Neat. Wow. Um... It was, <laughs> it was kind of hard not to freak out a little bit because I, I've only gotten to speak in, speak to him through proxy. It's it's really weird. Um, I'm hoping I get a chance to actually sail with him one day. You guys know this. I, I love Joe. I think Joe and Mike and Craig and Andy and Shelly and all of them, John, they're, uh, James, they're all amazing people. And I would love to sail with all of them at some point. I've already said that this episode. But that being said, he came in and started talking with us. And we started sharing our ideas and thoughts about the the shroud and what it meant. And the more I keep talking about this, the more I keep wondering if DeMarco and Lissetti aren't, are, are coming to the Sea of Thieves and we're trying to figure out how... And it's, they make it through the shroud somehow. And now they're in the game and we have to help them discover something. And they're trying to uncover something mysterious. And this is all kind of tying together like Stitcher Jim coming into play into the game through Devil's Roar, betraying Captain Morrow, breaking the Alliance, losing the, the Wailing Barnacle, knowing the Pirate Lord, being in control by the Gold Hoarder. Uh, that part's my speculation. DeMarco and Lissetti coming in, being chased by the Gold Hoarder in the comic books to find out where his gold is that the Pirate Lord stole. The Shroud Breaker giving them a way to actually get into the Sea of Thieves and then having to use us as ways to kind of play against the two siblings to try and find out like which pirate is going to be able to find the treasure and get it before the Gold Hoarder and before Stitcher Jim. Oh, that would be awesome! Oh, man. I really hope that's the thing. 
I really hope that's the thing. I really hope that DeMarco and Lissetti are coming. They're making it through the shroud. We don't know how they got through the shroud, but they're talking about finding a figurehead like the shroud breaker. And Stitcher Jim is not gone. He is just in the in the in the shadows lurking. He is shrouded in mystery as we find out more about him and his connection to the Gold Hoarder as the kids try and find their way to the to the Pirate Legend Tavern to, to be able to to see their father, their the ghost of their father again and find out what happened to him, why he's got knives stabbed in his back. Who is the person in the comic that helps Stitcher Jim get a map to the Sea of Thieves? Oh my god, yeah, I'm just freaking out a little bit. I'm just gonna come over here and kinda hang out for a second while I think about all this. Man, man, if that's everything, if that's if that's if that's what actually happens, and this all just kinda came to me in one felt swoop, that would be insane. I that's not gonna happen. That's just me putting things together too much. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna move off of that. I put the crazy put the crazy aside for a little bit. Let's get back to the actual <laughs> Let's get back to the actual Comic-Con stuff. All right, so to kind of touch a little bit more on Athena's Fortune. Athena's Fortune, the book by Chris, who was a former employee of Rare, apparently. I didn't know that. That's kind of cool to find out. He is, uh, his book is coming out on Tuesday, the 22nd. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably already know, unless you haven't been listening to the last couple of weeks, uh, I'm doing a, a giveaway. And the, the giveaway winner has actually been chosen. So congratulations go out to Kate Odd. I took all of the reviews, numbered them randomly from the US store, the Canada store, and the UK store. And then I went onto Google and did a random number generator, popped up a number. And when I checked to see who it was, it turned out to be Kate Odd. So congratulations to Kate Odd. You won a free copy of Athena's Fortune. It comes out Tuesday. I need you to get a hold of me. I need to find out where I'm going to be sending this to you. So if you want to send me your information, I would greatly appreciate it. As always, it's going to be easy enough to do at C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. That is my email address. I need to hear from you within 24 hours, hopefully, of this coming out because I'm hoping to just get the address changed so that I can actually send it to you immediately. That being said, the Twitter one is going to be picked at the end of the night tonight. It's not quite time yet, so I got maybe six minutes left, and then I'll find out and let that person know who won it, and then I'll be sending out their copy to them. Uh, that one is the the worldwide one, so that's probably gonna be send send out a little bit later on. You'll probably get it maybe not at the the right day because I think I might need to actually get that. That being said, guys, it's coming out. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so cool. I can't wait to find out more about Ramsey, his story of him taking the Athena's fortune out into the Sea of Thieves to find out that Stitcher Jim was just some guy on an island uh, that he went to when they came back and started calling him a liar and then got a map from uh, one of the dudes that was on his crew and maybe that's why he's killed is because he was backstabbed and his crew turned to, was cursed as a result and then turned into skeletons and maybe that's how we get the gold hoarder and the gold hoarder was the guy that got him the 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 map like how crazy would that be i really hope i didn't just ruin it for myself <laughs> i didn't i didn't think about that um well shoot i'm gonna read it regardless that being said i am gonna be covering the book um I haven't decided if this is going to be like on top of the normal podcast or a part of the podcast because if you guys remember rare has stopped kind of doing the the weekly patch updates so there's not going to be as much to talk about going on from now i mean it's mostly going to be speculation on what's coming out the the current update and then uh, everything in between is just going to be me blabbering on about stuff and telling stories so i hope you like that i hope you're in for it the news is always kind of the thing that most people don't really seem to to care about which is the funny part to me because that was the main reason why i started doing the podcast was to help inform people um that being said I, I, I wouldn't change it for the, the world, honestly. I, I really love it. But it does mean that I will probably be talking about my thoughts on the book as we go into the into the future with, with it being released. And as a result, I'm probably going to be talking a lot more about the actual comics to give a little more background about DeMarco and Lissetti's crews as their first voyage into the Sea of Thieves and kind of see how that kind of goes in parallel or perpendicular to Ramsey's story as far as him getting into the the Sea of Thieves and his first voyage. 
regardless, I'm really excited to find more out about Stitcher Jim, the, the Wailing Barnacle, how he eventually got into an alliance with Captain Morrow and the Shroud Breaker uh, to get into the Sea of Thieves. Because obviously she was the one that brought him into the Sea of Thieves if she needed the Shroud Breaker to bring him and her into uh, past the Devil Shroud. So it's interesting to find out like how he convinces her to do this um, when he's such a, a cowardly dude. So it makes me wonder if someone else was kind of pulling the strings on that. Um, that being said, uh, the the book's out Tuesday. I can't wait for it. I'm I'm going to be talking a lot about it because that's that's going to be a lot of what we look into to check out like what's possibly coming down the line as they kind of build more and more of this story and and keep an eye out too for the the community member the 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 special famous community member that is supposedly in this book that I, I we don't know who it is i know one person that knows but he didn't say and i'm still guessing that it's going to be um cheeks jr that it, it's it's i i don't know why i just i feel like it's going to be freddie prince jr but maybe that's i'm just crazy i'm just going to put my money on that ship and hope that i bet uh that my bet wins so anyway moving on <laughs> All right, so to get back into the questions that happened on the New York Comic Con panel, if you didn't watch it, it's actually pretty awesome. They asked some serious questions that were hard to answer for the team, so kudos to the team for working their way around some of these questions because they were pretty point blank. Um, They asked if the server size was going to be increased to get more than just six ships out on the actual sea no not in the foreseeable future maybe one day yes but for now they're mostly working on getting the skeleton ships to become more of an emergent experience much like the kraken and the meg so that they'll actually burst out of the water near someone randomly god help you if this happens because it's not gonna be fun they're fast they're dangerous and Man, if you don't have supplies on you, it's uh, I I don't know what to say. I I'm scared uh, because if they start hitting you and it just happens to be like the anchor cursed crew, nope, goodbye. You might as well just log out because uh, that's going to be a tough fight without supplies. Um, they also talked about adding new instruments. Um, no, <laughs> they're not going to be adding instruments for a while. Banjo earliest at best. Not in the foreseeable future. The biggest issue is not that they don't want to. It's that they have to work out the technology revolving around streaming music for the shanties. Apparently, this is a big thing. I I didn't realize that the way that you kind of jump in and jump out of songs and get synchronized so quickly is... A tough thing for the the game to actually handle, which is why we only have so many shanties. Which is amazing to me that they were able to get the the Merrick song in ju- that quickly. Like I, I mean, I guess I guess they already had it in place. It was already put into the update, so that was something that they already put in. And I know that they're working on the uh, the the Forsaken Shores one that that uh, Stitcher Jim does in the. Um, in the trailer, uh, you know, the devil's roar. I don't need to go into it, but anyway, that one. I know they're working on a full version of that one. They said that uh, that, that was in the works and that it would eventually be put in. They just don't know when. And um, I'm still I'm still hoping that we get like a little music box to interact with that can tell us, like teach us how to play more shanties or just kind of remind us how to play shanties. And that way we can only pick and choose the ones that we like and we don't like. Um, I'm still rooting for that. The other thing that we found out um, was that Mike, Adam and Pete uh, spent time each week. Uh, Mike Chapman um and and when i'm referring to mike mike chapman adam and pete at the uh when it comes down to the actual lore of the game spend at least one meeting every week to talk about the state of the canon and to make sure that everything is straight and narrow nothing's really conflicting and then they keep their story straight on that so i'm really glad to hear about that they they also alluded to using a community lore and community stories in the game uh, coming soon hopefully and that um they're they're saying that this is stuff from the community that they that they picked and pulled from and then worked into their into the game so i i obviously i support my friends and captain nightmare's been rooting for a sea of the damned 
for ages, ages, he's been wanting the Sea of the Damned. And I've been wanting it too, because I think that the land looks amazing. It reminds me of, of you know, all the all the stuff that you see, that you read about in Lord of the Rings, as far as the, the land of the undead. I grew up playing Blizzard games with uh, the undead as a race in the Warcraft series. There's so many references to liches and undead realms and the sea, you know, Davy Jones's locker, being able to go to the Sea of the Damned. And to, to be able to go down there and actually do stuff would be so amazing like that would be such a cool update like you know having to go down to the ferry and then having taking the ferry to the fair to the 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 port of the damp i don't know all that stuff just sounds so cool to me i i I want it to happen but then again i also want pirate legend athena broken weapons as well too that's that's something else i've been hoping for as well but uh i guess all in due time i know that they're working on pirate legend stuff so eventually i'm getting close to 10 guys i'm getting real real close to 10 i'm about a quarter of the way into nine I don't care about the hat. I already got what I want, but just hitting that 10 is going to be really fun. Um, maybe one day I'll actually have enough money to get the the fan, the fan the figurehead, the skeleton lantern figurehead. doesn't really matter, though, because I'm always using the spinal one anyway. The spinal one is so good. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, congrats to Captain Jorovic for finally hitting Pirate Legend and getting a spinal code during the stream this last week as the giveaway. Uh, really happy to give it to him. He really deserves it just by how much he actually puts out into my community as far as helping people, as far as, far as uh, uh, stories, all that good stuff. So happy, happy wishes, well wishes to him. Um, really appreciate that. The last little bit of the New York Comic Con panel that I did want to touch on deals more with the future content. And the question was asked if there would be new ground enemy types, more than just the actual skeletons. And there was a lot of talk about what uh, they'd kind of been prototyping with uh, Andy and Mike and one of the, the new uh, content creator, or not content creator, but one of the new, the new members, uh, George. And... There were some interesting theories that I had been thinking about, but one of the things that they were talking about were some of the new uh, creatures that were actually in the art book that they wanted to see in the game. Um, And I wanted to just kind of point out that there are very few that that could actually be. So if I went through the art book and I was kind of diving around and taking a look at some of the things that they could be putting into the game that would revolve around different enemy types. And in in the creature section in the art book, they talk about boars, goats, rats, cats, stingrays, crabs, monkeys, and parrots. Now, we already know that cats, monkeys, and parrots are planned as as microtransaction pets, and I'm waiting for those. Uh, rats were seen in some of the trailers as being on the ship, and that was early something that they wanted to put on to, de- to depict that there was water in the actual ship, and the ship was sinking, you know, rats sink, uh, running away from a, a sinking ship kind of thing. So that really just leaves boars, Goats and stingrays. Now, goats. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk that out of there just because that seems like a merchant thing that wasn't really realized. And stick with just boars and stingrays. Now, stingrays and boars are both represented with wall paintings or or uh, cave paintings in the world as it stands. Devil's Ridge has a lot of boar shrines and boar uh, pic- depictions. Uh, Thieves Haven has the the one hunter fighting a lot of different animals, including panthers and boars. Uh, there's also the stingrays on uh, Sharkbait Cove and the uh, and and over on Discovery Ridge. So. If, if with it being a land animal, I'm basically going to rule out stingrays in that case and stick with boars. So I think that if you kind of piece together all these silly little puzzles and you tie the strings to all the different pins on the wall, it's going to point you towards boars as being something that they would like to see in the game sometime in the future as a new enemy type. And I'm thinking big boars, like. That, sorry, that was that sounds weird. Um, gigantic demigod boars. I don't know. Maybe that's something that you guys may or may not like. Uh, everyone wants crabs. I, I wouldn't mind crabs. I wouldn't mind Lord Pinch making his return. The revenge of Lord Pinch and his son, Pinchy, in the videos. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making stuff up now. I think, I think that's going to do it, guys. Uh, the captain's log, really, I, I can't. I can't stress enough just 
if you didn't get a chance to watch the weekly stream this last week with with me and the devs, that was an amazing adventure. I can't sum up the two hours that I spent with them well enough in a podcast to be able to, to do it justice. So you, you're going to have to go watch that. That being said, I did get a chance to actually sail with Captain Jorvik. And he actually joined me on an Athenas because I typically go out and do Athenas in the Devil's Roar solo when I when I when no one's really available or no one's really kind of spoken up in the Discord channel that they want to sail together. So usually I'll just kind of pop online and that's when I start getting requests for, for joining and stuff like that. So instead of actually kind of hunting down people to, to actually sail with, I just kind of pop online and then see who, who wants to join me. And if I have a spot, they're welcome to it. If not, maybe next time. That being said, Captain Jorvik snuck onto the ship and we started chatting as we started kind of planning out the route for our Athenas. And sailing around, we did find a couple other ships and none of them were really were really kind of interested in us. It was kind of funny. Uh, and at one point, we were trying to get, uh, we were trying to detour around an actual volcano. And Captain Jorvik went ahead and decided to, as we were sailing by Morrow's Peak, decided to jump off over to Morrow's Peak and investigate the sloop that was there. Now, mind you, this was just a regular sloop, nothing too major, very simple. Most people would kind of attribute it to a, a new style of sailors that had just kind of ventured in and were trying to get a, a foothold on what the surroundings and what to deal with in the Devil's Roar. Oddly enough, Captain Jorvik couldn't find them at all on the island. They just weren't there. So he took it upon himself to kind of eliminate a potential threat and decided to raise anchor and start sailing their ship into the actual, uh, into the actual, uh, island and, and promptly sunk it. Um, one of the pirates did eventually come back to try and take claim of their ship, but Captain Jorvik dispatched of them very quickly, uh, proceeding to tell them that thank you for their, their service and to wish them a well day. Um, Eventually, we started to go back to Morrow's Peak because we realized as I was sailing out towards Ruby Fall that uh, <laughs> the reason why we were sailing to Morrow's Peak was actually to go pick up cargo. So we, we kind of forgot that. So I started heading back to Morrow's Peak. And as Captain Jorvik was on the island trying to find out like who was there or what was there or just grab the, the cargo for us, I actually found a pirate. Uh, there was a couple mermaids in the water, and uh, they were kind of betraying whoever was just hiding out on the island. Because next thing I know, there's one pirate that's just slowly kind of swimming towards the ship. And I'm always kind of on edge about, you know, there being mermaids in water or people, you know, that we just recently sank because I'm, I'm typically expecting retaliation. And this guy had the best retaliation. He swam up to the ship, he grabbed the ladder, and he stared me dead in the eye as he started to climb that ladder. And that was it. So I shot him in the face and slashed him with my sword. He fell in the water and disappeared. I don't know what happened to him, but God bless him for his nerve. After that, we grabbed the cargo and started heading out. Uh, we actually had a pretty good time. We didn't have too much trouble on most of the islands. And that day, I had the most impeccable timing. For whatever reason, I felt... The soul of each volcano. As it was erupting, it was constantly spewing out giant molten boulders trying to smash us into oblivion. And for whatever reason, I'd always get this weird twinge. My little spidey sense was going off. And I was thinking, we have to go in now. We, we have to sail into the volcano. And Captain Jorvik's like, this is madness. And I'm like, no, this is Sparta. So we start sailing into the, <laughs> we start sailing into the, into the volcanoes. And... Just as we actually get ready to get up into the actual shoreline to drop anchor, the volcano stops. And this happened twice. Not just once, but actually twice. Perfect timing. Drop anchor, volcano stops. Complete calm. It's almost as like we hit a pressure point and just said, it's okay, just breathe. Just relax. And that was when the volcano was like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, that's... That's cool. You guys do what you need. And we're like, thanks, dude. Woo! And we just kind of went off and did our thing until we got to the very last island. Now, if anyone's been down south into Devil's Roar, you know that that the the Ashen uh, uh, Island. And for some reason, I'm blanking on the name. I'd have to log in to actually to, to take a look at it and remember. But the Ashen one down there. Uh, I want to keep saying Ashen Verdict, but that sounds dumb. Uh, the the Ashen Island down south is notoriously bad for having two things. Cannons on three-fourths of its side and a very active volcano. 
Now, I've kind of figured out a couple spots where you can sail in and not have to worry about the, the cannons. It's not a good place to land because both are on giant boulders, crag sides of the actual island. So it, it's not easy for getting to and from, but it's kind of why we got the rowboats, right, guys? Uh, so I usually park over there. And I park in one spot that's just on the southeast side of, of Ashen's Verdict. I'm just going to call it Ashen's Verdict. Please don't email me trying to correct me or message me in Discord. I love you guys, but I, I'm it's late. <laughs> I'm not going to look it up. Um, so I park over there like I normally do when I'm solo sailing, so I don't have to worry about the cannons, and I have a quick access to the cave system that's down there, which is usually one of the riddle locations on that island. There's only like five, and it's usually one of the, the ones down there. We had skeletons on there, so I'm on the island, and I'm in the bay area kind of whacking the the vegans to death with my sword as I'm waiting for the the goths to come back and hoping that no metalheads actually show up because I don't have any powder kegs to take care of them with so Captain Jorvik uh the the good soul that he is decides that the the where we're parked is not very convenient and decides to to actually start sailing around the island to uh try and get a better spot so that we can actually get to and from the island uh, when when we do eventually die thanks to something dumb like a bunch of pistol skeletons. Anyway, so he starts sailing around and a cannoneer manages to knock him off the ship. I don't know how because he's a big brute of a dude, but it knocks. I mean, it is kind of a cannonball. That kind of makes some sense. But it knocks him off and the ship just starts sailing around and it kind of rubs up against a couple rocks. And I'm, I'm, I've am i died at this point. I've, I've been killed by one too many skeletons. And I'm sitting on the ferry listening to this thinking, dear God, how did we get into this position? And he's he's upset. He's he's sorry that he, he even touched the helm. And I'm not worried about it because I figure we're, we're both very able pirates. We'll be able to manage it, and I doubt we'll probably sink the ship. So I get back onto the ship, and I start bailing out the water that is starting to flood into the base of the actual ship. And I start plugging up the holes. Meanwhile, I'm telling him, I'm like, oh, God, we're sunk. It's terrible. It's up. I can't stop it. There's too many holes. We're going to lose everything. And he's upset. And then he swims up, and he's like, you son of a bee. And I'm like, yep, we're good. Let's go. And he's like, all right, let's go. So we get onto the island. We've kind of knocked out most of these waves. And it's been pretty good so far. We're actually doing a really awesome job. We're knocking out the waves. And then, of course, the volcano. <laughs> of course, the volcano starts erupting. And at this point, we're, it's, it's, it's literally the last voyage before the Athena's chest. And we've been at it for hours trying to get this done. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not, nope, I'm not going to shy away from this, from this volcano. We're going to sit this thing out in a sloop. I don't care how hard it is. We're doing this. And Captain Jorvik's like, this man is insane. I wish I had never joined him on this venture and we're all going to die and we're going to lose everything. And I'm like, nope, we're going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Just hang in there with me. And we do it. We actually do it. It takes every single last plank except for two. I had two planks on me at the end of the voyage. And granted, I, I'm usually kind of a pack rat, so I tend to start grabbing stock whenever I can all the time. It's not something I don't don't ever not do when I'm sailing. Uh, so unless I'm just going out for like a quick shipwreck during lunch or something like that. But that's, you know, you know everyone does that. So... We're we're sitting on the on the beach of the, of this this island. It's erupting. We're constantly getting hit by rocks. We're our feet are scarred from the hot water, the scalding water that is like going into the ship itself. As we're trying to use hammer and nail to plug up as many holes as we possibly can, my hands are singed through the gloves because I'm throwing buckets of scalding water out off the ship. Captain Jorvik is somehow working his way through the pain and madness that is ensuing by this guy that that managed to drag him along with promises of riches and glory and fame in in athena's because he just hit pirate legend he wants that athena's rap i've got him all the way to the very end and now i'm telling him to sit in a boiling pot of of hot water to sur <laughs> to try and get through this and we finally do it we outlast the volcano i don't know how 
pure craziness, we make it. It's amazing. And we get to our, our last island. We get the Athena's fortune. Uh, we get the, the chest of legends finished up. We turn it in, and the satisfaction is just overwhelming. We manage to get through so much that we actually start sailing back to Morrow's Peak, playing We Shall Sail Together over our speakers, our speaking trumpets, so anyone in the area can listen and know that two pirate legends just bested the best of all of these volcanoes in a sloop in the devil's roar. All right, that's going to do it for this episode, but before we go... Of course, I have to talk about you, the listeners. Now, I'm going to skip the uh, actual First Mates log just because of the length of this show, but I do want to cover the emails as well as some of the reviews that I got in. Again, congrats to Cat Odd or Kate Odd on the podcast review. You did win that book, so make sure you get in touch with me very quickly so that I can try and get that book out to you ASAP as it actually releases. That being said, I did get one email that I have to read out to you. This comes from Headhunter450. Dear Captain Logan, this is a formal invitation from myself and my nine-year-old son to accompany us on one of our legendary three-hour tours through the treacherous Sea of Thieves. We cannot ensure your safety on this journey due to the fact that we have come to the conclusion that we are the clumsiest father-son duo on the high seas. We also cannot ensure any financial gain from this voyage due to the, pre to the fact previously stated. We tend to lose more treasure to other pirates or the sea itself than we turn in. With that being said, the adventures are memorable and laughs are plenty. We decided within about two weeks after release to play for titles, not gold. So whenever we sink... No frustration came over loss of loot. This decision has led to some very poor decision-making, but we have a ton of fun, even if we don't turn in a ton of loot. We listen to your podcast weekly, so keep up the good work. Well, Headhunter, I look forward to sailing with you on one of these three-hour tours. I will be getting in touch with you shortly to make sure that we can try and get that done as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I am going to be pretty busy leading up into the next month. Uh, unfortunately, with school, with work, and with BlizzCon coming up, I'm going to be traveling as well as doing a lot of homework on the ends. But I do want to get that time in, so we'll try to work it out to make sure that we get a chance to do some of these voyages together. All right. Let's get some reviews in because I love you guys and I really appreciate all the help that you've given to help get this podcast really just out there for other people. So I'm going to be reading some of these and if I read it last week, I apologize. I haven't gotten a chance to go double proof it. So this one's going to come from Mudbucket71, a pirate treasure, five stars. When I can't play, I listen to Captain Logan. This makes my workday go by in a gunpowder flash. Enjoying this ever so much, give it a try. Blake W12, I don't know who that is. That's a really strange name. Five stars on Dispatch. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what he means by that. He says, love the new logo and all the great work you do. Thanks, Blake. Next, Jorvik Fourth says, "R, this be the podcast for me. Captain Logan does a stellar job bringing the internet to its number one Sea of Thieves podcast. Always on top of the news, speculation, and the stories from the Captain's Log are great. Set sail for fortune with this great show, Captain Jorvik. The last one is going to be from Tech Dragon, and it says, Great past, exciting future. Five stars from Tech Dragon 24. I've been listening to the Keelhauled podcast from nearly the beginning. This is by far the best Sea of Thieves podcast I've ever come across so far. The consistency has been quite nice. It gives me something to look forward to every week, even when there is are some weeks that I get so busy with life and I ha and I don't have time or don't feel like playing the game. Listening keeps me grounded and engaged in the community. My favorite moments are the spoilers and speculations. Listening to the ideas gets me excited for what the possibilities are for the future. However, the captain's log and first mate's logs are pretty awesome as well. Keep up the great work and I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. Tech Dragon, we have sailed together. We got killed multiple times by Carities. 
we know that <laughs> we had some fun though. Uh, that being said, that's all the reviews I'm going to do this week. Uh, hopefully if I get more next week, I'll do some more. If not, I'll dive back into the past ones. Um, that being said, pirates, that's going to do it for this episode. It's another long one. I I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't, I can't, I'm trying to keep these down. I promise. So, uh, Thank you. I appreciate it. If you want to get a hold of me, as always, there's great ways to do it. The best place to get a hold of me is on Twitter at C A P T underscore L O G U N. If you want to email me like Headhunter did, feel free to do so. C A P T L O G U N at gmail.com. I have got a Discord community and it is thriving. I think we're actually over 300 people at this point, maybe 200. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. The people in there are great. Come sail with them. Come sail with me. Come talk speculation. Come talk about other consoles as well, too. I've got a couple channels where uh, I've got some people checking out Star Fox, or no, Starlink. It's just, it's not a Star Fox game. It's just called Starlink. It just has Fox McCloud in it. But it looks really good, and I'm hoping that I can get some information on it beyond just the, uh, the normal first impressions. So that being said, there's also Red Dead Redemption coming out in October uh, this week, I think. So I think that's coming out in people are probably going to be talking about it that in the discord channel as well too so join the discord the show notes are in uh have the links to that as well as everything i talk about for the most part uh i'm going to be streaming i don't stream on a regular schedule anymore just because of work at school i try to get in there and i try to notify people when i'm going to be going live so i think that's about it yeah so yeah i've got a captain or c-a-p-t underscore l-o-g-u-n on twitch dot tv and uh pirates i think that's going to do it thank you i love you i can't wait to talk to you next week about all the stuff that's going on with sea of thieves and i look forward to sailing with you on the sea of thieves